We're here in the Moorkill Valley. It's a very active landscape with many young soils, but this particular site appears different to me. Can you uh, give us a little bit of a sense of what the processes are and why this looks different from other soils here? Yes, sir. This is a stable landscape, and uh, there are all kinds of unstable landscapes in this valley, but this one's quite stable. It's a uh, very sandy uh, parent material here, probably a, a glacial fluvial outwash delta or uh, a small beach area. So it's a very sandy um, site. There's not very much erosion on here like we would see in the Custron uh, silts and clays. And we've had time here uh, to develop this profile. There hasn't been uh, material coming in over top of it and burying it and, and, and like. So what we have here is a podsol that is uh, much older um, in, uh, in time undisturbed and we see really nice horizon development in here and we see a number of different soil forming processes in operation we have here a very thin forest floor that this appears to be a logged over area so there may be in some disturbance so it's quite thin here underneath that we have this bright AE alluviated horizon the iron and aluminum and organic matter has been moved from here down into the B so eluviated from the AE, eluviated into the BF horizon. So the iron and aluminum have are accumulating in this part of the horizon. There's also a fairly hard thin layer here that's probably has some clay has actually moved down in here and cemented this part of the profile off and then it gets softer as we go back down. So we have um, movement or translocations of materials from A to B and we have transformations also taking place in the BF horizon where the minerals are weathering at the same time. So those are the processes, eluviation, iron aluminum out, eluviation, iron aluminum in and we get uh, transformations happening in here as, as minerals weather and oxidize as well. So that's all going on. So when we're dealing with soil forming processes, they, they're not working in isolation to one another. They all work in combination. We try to isolate them, but we have to remember that they're always going on simultaneously, uh, quite often hand in hand. So there are biological, physical, and chemical determinants of what happens in this, this soil profile. Then. Yes, absolutely. They all work together. Mm -hmm. uh, and depending on which particular soil you're in, some processes are more right. dominant than other. In this pod soil we have um, eluviation is the dominant one and eluviation that's happening in here. Down lower in the profile we see some red kind of staining in here. These may be small um, indistinct models that have happened. So there may be a bit of a fluctuating water table here as the water drain from upslope, downslope through this profile in the early spring. But we're down here a good meter and it's really quite dry. The site here um, is going to be drier uh, um, compared to those of the finer textured silts and clay soils uh, that occur also through this valley.